Of all the notable cars that Japan has given us, the Skyline GTR has earned itself a reputation like no other. The name, a reminder of its long and prestigious legacy rooted in Japanese automotive innovation. The design, a result of a provocative and unique approach with each generation that stands out from everything else. The engineering, a promise of power, speed, and almost inexplicable performance. And the famous GTR badge, a symbol of its dominance in motor racing and cultural influence. It is the benchmark that all other vehicles in its class are measured against. The GTR is a name that leaves no questioning of its pedigree and potential. It not only dares to break records whenever and wherever it appears, it is also responsible for upsetting several motor racing series, forcing them to adopt new rule changes just to stop the GTR's continued dominance. Today, we will be featuring a unique, limited edition 40th anniversary Autec Skyline GTR owned by Derek Chung, who, by the time you have finished watching this episode, you will witness just what a die-hard GTR fanatic looks like. But before we jump into his car, let's take a step back and get acquainted with this limited edition GTR a little more. For this introduction, and for probably the first time in recorded history, we've brought together three perfect examples. Now, what makes a four-door Skyline GTR so special? And why did Nissan go to the trouble it did to create this limited edition GTR? To understand this, we need to take a trip down memory lane. In its humble beginnings, the Skyline started life in the late 50s 
as a premium saloon under the Prince Motor Company. There was even a sports coupe model designed by the prolific Italian car designer Giovanni Michelotti. Fast forward a few years into the early 60s came the second generation Skyline. First to sport the iconic round taillights, it made waves in the Japanese motorsports arena when it competed against the far more competitive Porsche 904, officially known at the time as the Porsche Carrera GTS. Despite losing first place to the more purposely built Porsche racing car, one of the five boxy Skyline saloons made headlines when it briefly overtook the Porsche and led the race. Ultimately, the five Skylines that entered the race secured second to sixth place ahead of all other rivals. This result earned the respect of a whole generation of motor racing enthusiasts and propelled the Skyline name into a long and illustrious motor racing history. When Prince Motor Company merged with Nissan in 66, the Skyline brand was carried forward and the first GTR was given birth shortly after. Unbeknown to most, the first GTR was actually a four-door saloon with a more well-known two-door variant appearing a year later in 1970, and the rest is history. After the launch of that first GTR saloon, a four-door Skyline GTR was never seen again, at least not until 1998, when Nissan decided to celebrate 40 years of Skyline. They resurrected the four-door Skyline GTR on the R33 platform and produced a limited run of just 416 units. To appreciate just how unique this GTR was compared to its standard four-door sibling, we need to take a closer look at one. To commemorate the 40th anniversary of Skyline, Nissan and its in-house performance subsidiaries, Nismo and Ortec, came together to develop a limited run of a four-door Skyline GTR. Turning a standard four-door Skyline saloon into a GTR spec performance car required more than just retrofitting it with a notorious RB26 power plant, drivetrain, and fancy electronics. It required a redesign from widened bodywork and aero from front to back to replicate the aesthetics of the two-door GTR. Interestingly, while the design team opted not to carry over the rear spoiler for a more elegant look, they did relocate the battery from the engine bay to the back of the car, just like its two-door counterpart. The interior received a similar yet unique GTR transformation, complete with a GTR gauge cluster, bucket seats and even the floor mats. What made the Ortec version even more special was a custom-made rear seat with a massive center bolster, resulting in mimicking a set of bucket seats for the rear passengers, so that they too can be securely seated whenever the driver decides to send it. This was not merely an engine swap. This was a redesign through and through, which could only have been done by the collaboration of designers and engineers from Nissan, Nismo and Ortec. And the crazy thing is, they went into all this trouble for just a limited production run of 416 units. Endeavours like this wouldn't be unusual from higher-end, low-volume exotic car manufacturers, but for a company the size of Nissan, projects like this rarely leave the drawing board. After more than two decades, based on best estimates, there are fewer than 170 still on the road today. The 40th anniversary Ortec Skyline GTR is quickly becoming one of the rarest GTRs in the world. Speaking of rarity, this is perhaps the ultimate Ortec GTR. Meet Derek Chung and his Ortec GTR, reimagined for the modern day. Like many Skyline fanatics, Derek felt he hit the jackpot when he got hold of his pride and joy, a mint condition R34 GTR V-Spec in its signature color, Bayside Blue. Being the last generation of Skyline to carry the GTR badge, 
Derek did not want to see it go to waste on commuting to and from work every day. In his search for something more practical, while still satisfying his cravings for nostalgia and adrenaline rush that his R34 GTR provided, Derek was introduced to the almost unheard of four-door Autech GTR by his friends at Turn 3, a small but dedicated GTR tuning garage in Hong Kong. He was quick to begin his own hunt for an original bone stock sample from Japan. And when he did, he wanted it to not only be restored, but to be modernized so as to reach its full potential. So, Derek brought the freshly imported GTR to his friends at Turn 3 to transform it into a Nismo Clubman Race Spec inspired Ortec GTR. Following the original Nismo CRS specification as closely as possible while making upgrades where the CRS spec fell behind the technology curve. Alan, the GTR guru at Turn 3, rebuilt the RB26 engine together with carefully selected parts in and around it to create a custom-made, high-responsive engine. The cam trigger was one place where they deviated from the CRS specification. Using NZ Wiring's electronic unit to replace the much antiquated mechanical unit from Nismo. The final piece of this puzzle was this unassuming looking dry carbon air intake cover by Nismo, where only a small handful still existed in the world when this car was being restored. The guys at Turn 3 went to inconceivable lengths to obtain one by calling in a personal favor with Akisan all the way from Nismo Japan to fabricate a brand new sample completely from scratch by hand. Needless to say, without the special connections of the resourceful people at Turn 3, this would not have been possible. For the interior, Derek wanted to keep almost everything original, with the exception of the R34 GTR steering wheel, offering a much sportier driving experience and vastly improving the overall look inside the cabin. As for the exterior, it sports the iconic Nismo 400R front bumper with a Series 3 front lip, and the Nismo NE1 exhaust completes its rear. A set of Odin's suspension specifically tuned for the R33 was installed behind each wheel. But perhaps the most outstanding performance upgrade were the brakes where after some masterful engineering, a set of calipers and brakes from the R35 GTR, 390mm diameter in the front and 380mm diameter in the back, were meticulously installed inside the iconic LM GT4 wheels with just millimeters of clearance. This helped to resolve one of R33 GTR's biggest weaknesses, braking performance and brought superb stopping power to match the car's acceleration. The result was a car that well exceeded Derek's expectations. With these carefully selected upgrades, Derek was in possession of one of the meanest and rarest GTRs on the planet. In Hong Kong, Derek and many other passionate petrol heads like him are keepers of some phenomenal machines, with equally remarkable stories behind them. I look forward to sharing with you more stories like Derek and his GTR on this channel, to document and appreciate the vibrant automotive culture that is sparkling on this tiny piece of land. So stay tuned for my next episode. Till then, goodbye.